Hello and welcome into another edition of Siena Saints Weekly. I'm your host Andrew Champagne. In just a moment we'll be joined by men's tennis standouts Mike Amico and Dylan Roberts. But first, let's take a look at the week that was in Siena Athletics. The saying goes that all good things must come to an end, and that's the case with the women's soccer team. The Saints saw their 12-game winning streak come to an end this week as they dropped two MAC road games to Canisius and Niagara on Friday and Sunday. The team is now 12-2-0 on the season, 4-2 in conference, and has very little time to relax. They host Harvard on Tuesday before traveling to face Marist on Saturday. Meanwhile, the men split two MAC road games this past week. The Saints topped Fairfield 3-1 on Friday behind a goal and an assist from James Beeston before dropping a 2-0 decision to Iona on Sunday. Siena is now 5-6-1 in 2010 with a 1-2-1 record in MAC play. They have two home games this week as Manhattan visits on Friday before St. Peter's comes to town on Sunday. Of course, you can catch all the action online at SiennaAllAccess.com. Going to the links, both the men's and women's golf teams finished their fall seasons with flair last week. Junior Justin Dietz took first place individually at the Connecticut Cup on Tuesday with a three under par score. This was the first individual win by a St. men's golfer in over two years, and he won by an impressive six-stroke margin. Also, the women placed third overall at this past weekend's Rutgers Invitational. Leading the way was Catherine Shomo, who tied for third amidst rainy and windy conditions. Both teams are now off until the spring. In volleyball, the Saints slipped to 4-15 and 15 this week after two conference losses to Iona and Fairfield. Siena's now lost five in a row and will look to right the ship at home this weekend. They host Ryder Saturday and welcome Loyola to the Ark on Sunday. Shifting to cross country, the men and women competed in Saturday's UAlbany Invitational. The women placed 14th while the men checked in 20th. This was the final meet before the MAC Championships, which will be held October 29th in Madison, Connecticut. In field hockey, it was a rough week for the Saints as they lost two overtime heartbreakers at home. Siena led 1-0 against Robert Morris on Friday after sophomore Olivia Welly's first goal as a Saint, but ended up losing 2-1. The Saints then hosted St. Francis Sunday for Senior Day, and Welly's second goal in as many games tied it at 2 to force overtime. However, the Red Flash scored off a penalty corner in the extra period to end the game. Siena travels to Monmouth on Friday and visits Ryder on Sunday. And while both the men's and women's tennis teams have completed their fall seasons, that doesn't mean the rackets have been put away just yet. We're now joined in studio by men's tennis players Mike Amico and Dylan Roberts. Guys, welcome to the show. Hi. Now, first of all, talk about how the fall season went for the team. I understand you guys have played a lot of close matches. Um, we were three and five. Um, I think three of the matches went four and three. Um, both determined by the doubles point, which the coach finally switched the teams up. So I think there's better chemistry now than there was before. And it showed against Wagner when we got the doubles point where we did it the last three matches. Now, Dylan, how tough is it to stay focused through the winter months when you aren't going to be playing a competitive match against another team until after the snow melts? Uh, despite not practicing, um, we stay pretty focused, especially in conditioning. You can catch up on your uh, fitness and definitely um, keep up with your schoolwork. So um, playing against teammates like Mike and everybody definitely raises the level. So we stay, try, to, um, try to stay focused throughout the whole winter. Mike Dillon mentioned the off-season conditioning aspect. What's a typical day of off-season practice like for the team? Um, off-season, we probably do, we go to the arc and do probably run two miles, but sprinting, jogging, um, conditioning, crunches, push-ups. The usual. Certainly sounds like you guys don't get a break, huh? <laughs> Not at all. Now, uh, Dylan, what are some of the goals you guys are setting for the spring part of the season? I know it's a long time away, but you have to have put some thought into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're definitely trying to do better in the MAC this season and um, provide a little more, um, a few more victories in the uh, MAC tournament and uh, try to go deeper this year. Now, my personal favorite part of the show, the lightning round. Last week, Megan Yee remarked that she would like to have dinner with Roger Bannister, Zach Efron, and Jesus Christ. You guys have a tough act to follow. First of all, and you guys can both answer this, favorite movie? Um, hangover. Paranormal Activity. Wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, hangover. Great hangover. movie. Can test <laughs> that. Uh, favorite TV show? Um, family Guy. Yeah, Family Guy. Okay. It's a pretty unanimous pick. Favorite <laughs> character on that show, because there are so many really well-written characters there. Stewie. 
Definitely Stewie. Brian. Yeah. Yeah, Brian and Stewie. Great chemistry there, certainly. <laughs> Talking dog, baby bet on world domination. Can't really go wrong. Your worst, your biggest pet peeve for, for the both of you? People biting their fork. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just the noise, the scratch. Oh, I just can't take it. Biggest pet peeve. People asking if they know people that they don't know. Mm. Yeah, because it makes you rack your brain a lot, and yeah. you don't know whether it's really small talk or not. Yeah. Favorite pre-meet superstition? It can be any of yours. It can be somebody on the team. It could be somebody you've met from an opposing team in college or high school. That's why it's the lightning round. I'm really making you think here. Uh, Maybe Crayman's uh, salt. Yeah, it's, uh, kid we used to know. Um, they did tournaments back when we were still junior, like uh, high school players. He used to eat a handful of salt so he wouldn't cramp up before he played. Did it work? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. The funniest member of your team. Sean Conroy. Sean Conroy. What's one of the funniest things he's done that you can repeat here? <laughs> oh, definitely just singing on the van rides and just oh. bumping, <laughs> bumping the car as we go to matches. <laughs> he's a hysterical kid. What's the funniest song he sang for you guys? Oh, jeez. Oh. Wait, what's that Italian song? Oh, he sings uh, Conte Portiro with me by Andrea Bocelli <laughs> in the car. So it's definitely, like, if you've seen that in The Hangover, I mean, uh, The Hangover, Step Brothers, when he does the Spanish version of it with Will Ferrell, it's sort of a that song. It's just hysterical. It sounds like a hysterical image. And yeah. now, the big burning question that I set up earlier. If you two could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Go ahead, Mike. I would say Roger Federer, Lil Wayne, and Nicki Minaj. Lil Wayne or Lil Wayne? Lil Wayne. <laughs> okay. Just, just making sure. There might be somebody named Wayne who's about 5'2 watching out there. Yeah. Jessica okay. Alba, uh, Rafael Nadal, and I'll go with Kobe Bryant. Hmm. Athletes, okay. actresses. <laughs> yeah. Apparently standard, but still some good entertainment right there. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Sienna Saints Weekly. I'd like to thank our guests for men's tennis, Mike Amico and Dylan Roberts. I'm Andrew Champagne, and I'll see you next week.